Ever since I got into airbrushing, I've had one big issue, and that big issue is that I only own two airbrush color jars. So whenever I get into a project, I need to use one color, then clean it out and add another color. It's kind of annoying when you're on a roll and you just want to paint stuff. I was hoping that I would find somehow to make these airbrush color jars cheaper than what I could buy. Now, they are sensible prices, but I thought, well, if they cost this much, someone's making a profit somewhere so I could maybe make something cheaper. And I couldn't find any really good DIY videos out there. This is my adventure story about making my own DIY airbrush color jars. There are a lot of places I went for this particular adventure, but I didn't want to go any place where the items I needed would cost a lot of money. So a good way to find things you need for cheap is to go to a place that you wouldn't expect to find them. My adventure took me to Home Depot, Lowe's, Kmart, Walmart, Big Lots, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and it ended today at Dollar Tree. I went yesterday to Big Lots, and someone asked me if they could help me. And I said, yeah, I'm looking for tiny jars. And then they helped me uh, look for tiny jars and we didn't find any. And then I said, okay, do you have reusable straws? So uh, the woman couldn't find them immediately, but then she found me in the store and gave me the reusable straws. Then I went over to look for some transparencies because I just built a vacuum former machine and I'm looking for the right type of acrylic to use in it. And lo and behold, a nice young woman who was just doing her job just had to be right next to me organizing things. And at the time, I wasn't thinking about why this happened. I thought maybe it's just my rugged and manly appearance. But then uh, it dawned on me that all of the things that I've described wanting didn't go into making this. They went in to building this. I guess I can understand their concern. And while looking for those images, I was reminded of these. Do you remember seeing these in gas stations? I do. I didn't know what they were for, though. If you don't know what they're for, I guess you're better off. They're for showing her that you love her. Onward. So our journey begins with these three elements. A pack of salt and pepper shakers, which I got from Dollar Tree a roll of plastic tubing, which I got from Home Depot, and for the piece de resistance, a pack of reusable drinking straws that got me followed by some young lady doing LP work at Big Lots. These are the things that I thought I would need for this project. Oh, how wrong I was. So to clean things up, these are the elements uh, that I started with. Before I began, I wanted to make sure that the salt shaker would fit nicely next to the airbrush, and it did. So that's cool. Now here's where things started getting a little interesting. As you can see, this is a shot of the bottom of the airbrush versus the straw. I thought, well, I'm just going to mold this straw to fit in that hole. This is going to be really easy. So the idea I had was to drill a hole in a piece of wood and then heat up the straw and put the straw in the wood so it molded to the size. Easy, right? And here's a very nice in-focus photo of my craftsman-like drill work. I realized that if I just heated up the straw and shoved it in a hole, it would get smushed. So I needed to create some kind of taper in the wood so the straw would taper to a point. So I went ahead and I created uh, three different holes of varying sizes all the way down to the skinniest one. And I stuck an ice pick in there and tried to smooth it all out. I knew it wasn't going to work. It was around this time where I realized that these reusable straws were not the key to get me in the door of the airbrush jars that I so desired. So I then began wondering to myself, what do I have around the house that is thin and hard and plastic and a, a tube of sorts? 
Aha! I knew I had been holding on to all of these pens for a reason, so I began disassembling the interesting looking ones, looking for a piece of hollow tube that was hard, that would fit inside the airbrush hole. And I ended up finding one piece that fit. It was the uh, the top of a retractable pen and it was like a two-part thing with a piece of black plastic in it. Uh, you can probably see it. It's right above the screwdriver there. But at this point, the work space was beginning to look like a giant mess. It was at this point where I put together everything I knew that wasn't going to work and I organized it into boxes. I got a few new springs out of the deal from the pens and a few neat interesting plastic bits but I knew uh, lightning wasn't going to strike twice today. So I counted my blessings and I took the one piece that I found and I cleaned up everything else to uh, move on. So now here is our cast of characters. Here are the things that are going into our airbrush jar. We have the salt shaker itself, a piece of tubing, a washer, a rubber washer, and a metal washer. Uh, those were going to be used to seal the jar uh, and uh, yeah, to seal up the holes. I was going to hot glue both those washers on. And uh, the uh, blue part on the right, that goes inside the tubing and that fits snugly inside the airbrush. In another strange moment of guessing what was about to go wrong, I covered the top with just a piece of black duct tape, you know, to keep it airtight. I then attempted to hot glue the rubber washer to the underside of the salt shaker, hoping that somehow the hot glue would grip in between the holes and it wouldn't go anywhere. Oh dear. The whole thing fell apart as soon as I tried to screw it together. The washer was way too thick and it wasn't big enough to cover the lip. And I don't think salt shakers are meant to have washers in them. So I'm going to have to try something new in the future. It was at this point in the project that I didn't really care about how cool it looked, and I just wanted it to be functional. So I chose a Forsner bit that was the size of the plastic tubing that I had, and I drilled a nice hole right in the center of the salt shaker. And the Forsner bit turned out to be a good choice because I think a drill would have left sharp bits on the edges and this cut a nice clean hole. I then assembled all of my hard work just to take a peek at how it looked. Simple, but hopefully it'll do the trick. I didn't get it through my thick skull yet that a washer this size wasn't going to work so I tried it again anyway, like a doofus. And here is my assembled airbrush jar. I, I can see how it could look like this is something to smoke dope out of. I poked a hole uh, in one of the available holes uh, just so the air could get through because you, you need a way for the air to get through to these jars. All the jars have holes in them. And here's a photo that I only took one of because I was so sure it was going to be in focus. I'm not going to need to but I don't even know if you need a photo. I could have just said I poked a hole in it. But hey, I'm a visual guy. So it was the moment of truth to try out my DIY airbrush jar and I didn't want to fill it with any paint. So I just filled it up with some water. Drum roll please. Is it gonna work? Oh I hope it works. It works! Now oh, that's pretty cool, man. So that is my version one of my airbrush jars. Uh, in doing this project, I realized there are a lot of excessive things that were not needed. I do believe version two is just going to feature a plastic tubing that's the size of the airbrush hole, and I could use the same piece, put it inside the jar, seal it up, and whammo. That's all you actually need. Top grips the tubing just fine and you can also hold it in your hand as you're using the airbrush so it doesn't wobble around. Uh, for a price of probably 55 cents per jar 
uh, you can make your own. So as soon as I get my uh, version 2 completed, I'm probably going to make a video and share it to YouTube because there's undoubtedly someone else out there who's in the same predicament as I am, looking for cheap airbrush things. Thank you very much for watching. I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters again, because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have the opportunity to take these adventures. I'd probably be having uh, an adventure uh, overnight, five nights a week, at the uh, convenience store down the street and that is not much of an adventure. It's a lot of fun uh, to make art things and to make art and I really appreciate all the help uh, that I get from my Patreon patrons in this uh, adventure. I've used the term adventure four times. I think I've had about six cups of coffee today and I'm crashing. So that's it for today and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks again.